Hello, hello, and welcome to this bonus art camp video. Today we are going to be sketching and painting bell-shaped flowers. For this project, I use a pencil, watercolor paper, watercolor paint, paint brushes, and watercolor pencil crayons. Now you can use cardstock instead of watercolor paper and regular pencil crayons instead of watercolor pencil crayons. Improvise and get creative with what you have at home. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to show you, this is from the PDF flower shapes and follow along with me here, the bell shaped flower. So it starts with these little upside down bells and I angle them so that they're sticking out. They're not perfectly straight up and down. And I put two rows of these bells, these upside down bell shapes. And after I've done my upside down bell shapes, I put little arrows, it's like the head of an arrow in the middle of my bell shape. And I join the edges to make a scallop defect that will become the petals of my bell shaped flower. And then I add some leaves to my flowers. Now let's repeat that again. I'll show you the process again so you can see it a few times and become more confident with it. So upside down bell shapes to start. I do four, you can do more. Experiment with how they're placed. Then I do the little arrow in the middle, not touching the sides. And then from the arrow to the sides, I join them together to create the petals of the flower. Now on the top, I add little loops and these act as the little green leaf that is on top of the flower where it attaches to the stem. Speaking of the stem, let's draw it now. Now, your stem might go behind your flowers. So if you start to draw your line up and you meet a flower, pick up your pen and then continue your stem on the other side of the flower. So I also have stems that attach the flower, smaller stems that attach the flower to the main stalk stem. Okay, so you can see that I'm making my stem with two parallel lines. They run parallel, but they don't touch until the top where they kind of curve together. It may seem a little unnecessary, but I'm going to show you one more time. The more times you see something, the easier it will be for you to do it on your own. So starting with your four upside down bell shapes. Remember, you can totally do more. I just did four. Adding the leaves that go at the attachment point between the flower and the stem. Putting the pointy middle arrow that will become a petal and then joining it to the petal. There we go. I like how those turned out. You see how they're all different. Then I add my stem. Now this one, I definitely had to lift up my pen because my stem is behind some of the flowers. The stem curves at the top and you can add a bud, which is kind of a blobby oval. And if you wish, you can add in the background petals. So these are the petals that are on the other side of the flower that's not facing you. And I just do that with more little arrow shapes. I encourage you to play around with the shape of your flowers and the placement of the petals. Spend some time observing bell flowers and see how your perspective can create a bell flower. It's going to be different than mine. All right. And then I added pistols here, just a line that forks into three at the end that sticks out again. You don't have to add that part. What looks good to you? Here, I added some lines to define the petals a little bit more. 
and I think that's a pretty awesome bellflower. Let's move on to the project part. So I'm going to start with these upside down bells. And here I'm using watercolor paper and watercolor pencil crayons, but if what you've got is paper, regular paper, and regular pencil crayons, that's awesome. Use those. The, the important part is that you create this bellflower. It's very fun. Okay, and then I add my petals, my front facing petals. And to keep it simple, I've just kept them all kind of the same here. But you might observe a bellflower where the, pe the flowers face in different directions, and that would change what you're creating. On top of here, I have my little leaves. And remember, we're working in color now, so you're going to want to switch colors here. And these leaves are where the stem attaches to the flower. Here I was playing around with shading. Now watercolor pencil crayons are going to turn into paint when I add water to them. So it's a good opportunity to start adding some dimension. I have more control of these pencils than I do watercolors. If you're using regular pencil crayons, you can just shade like we did in the spiral video. Okay, so I started to add in my stem using two parallel lines that join at the top and curve over. I love bellflowers so much. Okay, and then I colored in my leaves and I started to darken certain parts of my picture and add in different shades. So I added some yellow to my green and I added some darker areas in the flower. The parts that would be farther away from me, I darkened those lines and played around with how I liked to create dimension. You might want to darken different parts of yours. The color of bellflowers is unbelievable. It's so beautiful. There's, there's so much there. So I added in some light blue and some dark blue and some purple, all sorts of colors. I really encourage you to find some bellflowers, even just a picture. But in real life, their color is just so lovely. It's inspiring. Okay, I added some darker spots on my stem to define it a little bit more on the stalk. And now it's time for water. We add water on top of watercolor pencil crayons and it turns into paint. So what I did was I took a pretty fine brush and I covered the flower carefully in water. And then I took some watercolors from my watercolor palette and I dab them in there because the whole flower is covered in water. Not too much water because I used a small brush, just a thin layer. And then I can play with the color. And I noticed I probably wanted some darker colors and more pigment. So I added those to my next flower before the water. So again, I cover the flower with a thin layer of water. And then I add paint from my palette where I want it. When we use watercolor pencil crayons, it's so much easier to control the paint and it's way more fun to play with the color. So here I'm adding in some darker parts because I know from the last couple flowers that that's what I like. And then I'm shading some extra shades in there, some extra blue. And I add my water, just a thin layer of water. You don't want to add too much because the more water you have, the more your paint moves around. And now dabbing in pigments from my palette, some purples and some blues. Remember watercolors will dry lighter than they look when they're wet. The color dries a little lighter, so don't, don't be afraid of pigment. Okay, one more time, I go over before I add the water. Before water's involved, I add some extra shades in there because it just seemed right. And then I add my thin layer of water, being careful to stay in the lines as best I can. And then on top of that, while my flowers are still wet, I can add in pigment from my palette and mix and blend it in. So you see I'm mixing in that blue at the bottom and that purple around the edge. I can do this because my flowers were still wet. Once they dry, it's harder to do the blending of the colors. That's why this is step one. You're going to experiment with how much water you want to use. 
how much pigment you want to use. You could do this all day. Discover your watercolor style here. What makes a flower that you like? On top, I have my bud. The bud is the unopened flower. And I had to go back and add more pigment. <laughs> Bellflowers are just so vivid. It, it seemed important to add more pigment. So pigment is just the paint, uh, the, the paint for my palette. And then I added some different colors into my stem. I painted my stem just by adding water. It might be easier if you let your flowers dry before you work on the stem. You can always use a tissue to blot up your paint when it's still wet. And I did that just to make the, the center a little bit brighter. But you experiment with what you like and make your painting your own. Go, go hang out with some bellflowers and then paint them. Okay, once my, my painting had dried, I came back and I thought, you know, I'm going to add some petals in the background. So I did that with the pencil crayons first and a fine paintbrush to add in little bits of water and some lines to define the petals a little bit clearer in my picture. And you can just see I'm going through, I'm, I'm playing with having a slightly darker color in the background because when you're looking at them, they don't look as vivid as what's right in front of you because those petals are behind the flower, behind what I can see. Okay, and then I added the veins with some little bit darker shades than the background so that they stick out and some veins in the bud. Play around with how much paint that you want on your paintbrush, how much water, experiment. When you're doing line detail, you don't want too much water. But when you're filling an area, you want more water. I just felt like it needed some leaves. So I added some leaves. And I started with this yellowy green. And I added different colors into it until I liked what I saw. With watercolor, it's all about getting the amount of water right for you. So some people like to paint with more water. I like to paint with a cautious amount. <laughs> and that's where experimentation comes in. So play around with it and see what works for you. There is no way to get it wrong. Just make sure it's fun. Now let's all take a big belly breath and remind ourselves that this is just play and remember to have some fun and experiment, experiment, experiment. I would love to see what you create while you're having fun. If you want to share, you can send me a picture at the email address in the description box for this video. Thank you for creating with me and have a beautiful day.